Hi Aquarius, Sun and Rising. Welcome to your July 2022 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So um, this is already July. I'm recording this on July 2nd. I apologize for the delay. I don't really know how that happened, but um, you know, sometimes things just get uh, lost in the shuffle, I guess. So um, it's really okay because the action kind of picks up on the fifth. Now, obviously we have uh, planets inhabiting different signs, different transits, but in terms of changing signs, on the fifth, Mars goes into Taurus. Now, Taurus is a fixed sign like you, Aquarius, so that is going to affect one of your angular houses. In this case, since Taurus is ahead of you, this will be the fourth house of home and family. And Mars here can have different um, possibilities for different Aquarians. Um, for some of you, this may be renovating your property. You may be putting more energy into it. You know, Mars can be uh, construction work or just if you're planning on moving, which by the way, um, <laughs> because uh, Uranus is also in this sector, anything can happen. So you may be just kind of like, even if you don't, don't follow um, astrology to the T and you don't know every transit that's happening at this time, you may sense it because Aquarians are very um, intuitive. And so you may know that your housing situation is tenuous at best, and you may feel this um, need to, to, to really start uh, organizing things, or, or I was going to say packing, but that sounds like it's really like you're going to leave. But no, I mean, just getting your house in order because you want to be prepared in case you have to leave at a moment's notice, that kind of thing. Um, th there's actually going to be a time in August, I believe, where Mars and Uranus form a conjunction in Taurus. And that should be, I was going to say lovely. And I was with my voice dripping with sarcasm because that could be quite volatile on the world stage or, you know, in your, it, for the collective, because, you know, Mars is very volatile and warrior-like and Uranus is very unpredictable. So the, the idea of um, protests and this desire for freedom at any cost uh, could really come to the forefront. And it might not be, I'm not, you know, I want to make it clear that I'm not saying that if any of this happened, it would be unwarranted. It might be, there might be a damn good reason for it. But the thing is, is like, how will it all shake out is, is the, is the real point is that when people feel like this need to kind of like vent or, or express, you know, express their anger about the situation that they're, they're being forced to accept, um, you know, that can get a little bit hairy. So, uh, there's like the, there's like the uh, collective version of this and then the personal version, which is you and how it affects your fourth house. So another thing that we can look at here in terms of the past, you know, the fourth house can be the past, your childhood. Mars here, um, uh, the fourth house can be your mother. Some people say the father. I'm going to say the mother. And what? And, you know, you might be having a conflict with her, with Mars here. And because Uranus is here, you may be like, you know what? I am so tired of this. I'm so tired of being tied to this family. I don't feel like I belong to this family, you know, um, I, I swear I was adopted or, you know, I was hatched <laughs> from some kind of, you know, alien creature and put in the, placed in this household because I just don't relate to it. And you may just want to break free from it. Now, again, you know, uh, Uranus will meet up with Mars officially 
I'm talking about in the same degree in August, but it'll, it'll start, you know, since it's, they're in the same sign, then it still is going to be in play. Uh, and actually, you know, um, if there's like a, a distance of 10 degrees, if that's acceptable for this, um, conjunction, then it won't be long before, um, it gets to that level, uh, in July even. So July going into August, we should say. But, uh, but I haven't really looked at it recently, so, um, I can't say for sure. Um, on the same day, Mercury goes into Cancer, and for Aquarius, this is going to be your sixth house. This is the house of work. It's a very practical area. If you're looking to change your diet, you know, Mercury rules the sixth house, and it rules diet, health matters in general, but diet is part of that. And so you might be reading books on when I say diet, I'm not talking about losing weight, although maybe for some people that might be a thing, but I'm talking about in general for nutrition, nourishing your body. And, um, you know, this can be anything like you could be talking, you could be interviewing for work or it can run the gamut, obviously, but that could be happening, um, at the same time. And on the 13th, there is a full moon at 21 degrees of Capricorn, and this is in your 12th house. And full moons in the 12th house can be very psychic. I mean, this is a dream state. So if you already are a very vivid dreamer, Aquarius, you might want to keep a notepad by your bedside because you never know what messages may be coming through for you. Uh, remember that Pluto is also in Capricorn. And uh, by the way, this is a super moon. So um, it's a great time to let go of self-defeating patterns, addictions. And um, because Pluto is, I don't know if this would be considered a conjunction. Um, I think I've heard other astrologers say as much. But if it is... Um, then it can be a situation where um, we're letting go of, you're letting go of something uh, and you're empowered to do so. Pluto is a very um, healing influence, even though it is it can be associated with upheaval because it will... Um, kind of like, um, like lance a boil, you know, if you've ever lanced a boil, the boil can be part of, um, Pluto too, because it has to do with that, um, diseased matter, if you will, or that pus. I mean, I, I know some of you might be eating, so I, I'm sorry about that, but that kind of thing that's, um, impure, and so it's really about uh, purifying yourself. And this is the house of karma, so it could even be on that level. And remember that exhausting karma, good luck with that. I really don't think that that's possible, but I do think that we can, you know, uh, become so aware, self-aware that we really burn through a lot of karma because we're no longer acting from an unconscious place. The 12th house is um, unconscious memories, but I would say that unconscious memories breeds unconscious actions, you know? Even like if you think about addiction, some people have, you know, even say that about themselves, that they have addictive personalities. Well, why is that? Are you born with an addictive personality? Yeah, there's some ancestral karma around certain addictions. Um, but still, I think that it can also be your karmic um, predisposition on your own based on past lifetimes where you're doing the same old, same old. So um, being able to understand that and say, I want to transcend that can mean so much, you know, and you might be able to just 
live life with an awareness that doesn't create more unthinking karma, if you will. Karma simply means action. But sometimes when we take action almost like a robot, like we're uh, pre-programmed, we're we're not really in alignment with um, our intentions. When you're in alignment with your intentions, I still believe you can screw up. I don't think that you're you, you're going to be perfect 100% of the time, but I don't feel that you're stumbling in the dark anymore. So I think that um, you're still at a higher um, vibration and that alone protects you from the lower... Um, consequences like accruing more and more entanglements you know at this material level okay so on the 17th we have a um a transit of venus going into cancer which means that venus has been in your fifth house um the fifth house is the house of love and creativity in Gemini. Now you're going to have Mars in Gemini for, I think like about seven months, eight months. I mean, I'll be talking about that at a later date. Maybe I'll make a separate video on that, but this, that's like unreal, you know? And so this area of the fifth house is going to be a big story for you towards the end, you know, the last um, quarter of 2022 Aquarius until March of 2023. So if you are somebody who's looking for love, this could be a thing. Now, Mars is not necessarily that romantic, the softer side. It's more of the lustful side. Maybe you're going to be sowing your wild oats. If you're coming off of a marriage uh, or the breakup of a committed partnership, you might be going on a kind of a, so I was going to call it a bender, you know, but I'm talking about kind of a, a more passionate side to things, but it could simply be like a very exciting uh, relationship that is, is, um, where you feel strong attraction for that person too. Um, and if you are an artist, forget about it. You can be incredibly productive during this time, but we're not there yet. We're actually in the, uh, sixth. Well, I said, we're not there yet. I'm talking about Mars. Venus has been there and done that. Now Venus is in the sixth house. Venus in the sixth, is, you know, it's a very strange thing for Venus because Venus is romantic. The sixth house is like, you know, office files. <laughs> it's very, um, it's very practical, pragmatic, uh, efficient. That's not very, that's not very sexy. That's not very romantic, but it is good for, I, I call this the Vitamix transit because a Venus rules um the seventh house but it also rules the second house of earned income and possessions uh and luxury items and a luxury item is something that you don't necessarily need at that level at that cost but you want it anyway and one of those things can be a blender a high-speed blender and um vitamix is like the uh I was going to say the Cadillac, but that's probably not really the in car these days, is it? Uh, I don't know, the Subaru <laughs> uh, of, um, of blenders. And I have a Vitamix, and um, it's really great. Um, but anyway, the reason I say this is because the sixth house is a house of health. Uh, some people may say, I want to spend... Um, I want to give up some of my money for a, um, high ticket blender because I feel like this is going to enhance my health. And, um, the other thing that this can be about is receiving money. Maybe that's why Mercury is 
in the sixth house because you're negotiating salary negotiation. This can give you, Venus can be about money. This can give you that uh, money uh, at, the, at the workplace. You may have um, nicer relations with your coworkers. That can be the sixth house as well. On the 19th, Mercury goes into Leo. So now we have these opposite uh, house transits because Leo is your opposite sign. So seventh house matters. Mercury into Leo. Communicating for some reason with a partner. Now, maybe it's even an ex-partner or soon to be ex. The seventh house can also be... Um, your clients, one on you know one on one relationships with people, and it can also be court matters. So, if you are getting divorced, if you are suing someone, or you know something going on, that could certainly be what is happening. And so things start to heat up in this area. On the twenty second, the sun goes here. And on the 28th, there's a new moon at five degrees of Leo. So new uh, beginning in this, this sector. Now this can be good for a relationship. Don't get me wrong. And you're going to have Venus here uh, pretty soon too. Probably like in the first week of August. So I'm not saying that you're going to just like break up with someone or you're getting divorced or anything, but for those who are, um, when you have this money, uh, Venus, this transit that's associated with money in the seventh or eighth houses that could indicate like, you know, getting money from a lawsuit or from a, um, Uh, let me see. Maybe from from an inheritance or from a divorce settlement, something like that. And um, so anyway, that's what I have for you, Aquarius. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.